the better up here. Oh yeah. Okay. So as you heard when I uh, did my new member talk, I am the executive director of the Pedrosi Scholarship Foundation. So how many of you here are familiar with the foundation and what we do? Uh, so a number of people, so I'll just kind of go through and a few people actually heard a lot this presentation just a couple weeks ago at a chamber event. So I'll kind of go through some of the beginning of it quickly since I only have 15 minutes or less, right President Phil? Um, so the mission of the foundation is we encourage and assist Livermore students in their pursuit of higher education and advanced training by providing scholarships, information, and other resources. And the foundation was established because Mario Pedrosi, who some of you may have known, was a Livermore businessman and essentially uh, left his entire estate to establish the foundation. He had never married. So that's how this uh, foundation was started. So it was definitely a legacy bequest and really a gift to the Livermore community. So that was Mario's way of giving back to the community where he essentially lived his whole life as an adult. So who are Pedrosi Scholars? So Pedrosi Scholars are graduates of the Livermore uh, Public High School, so the four high schools in Livermore. So that would be Granada High School. Uh, anybody who's graduated from Granada in the last 50 years would be eligible for a scholarship. Livermore High School, Del Val, and Vineyard High School. And as well as a small group of students who would be seminarians at St. Patrick's uh, Seminary in Menlo Park who lived in Alameda County at the time of their high school graduation. Do any of you qualify under that category? <laughs> yeah. So uh, Pedrosi scholars go to school throughout the country and award scholarships and it's $1,000 a year currently for one to four years depending on what type of scholarships awarded. So it's technical vocational scholarships, so just as the, uh, this club awards scholarships for technical vocational training, uh, so does the foundation for community college. So a college or a high school graduate that's planning to go to Las Positas next year, if they're awarded this year, would be awarded $2,000, $1,000 for each of their two years at Las Positas. Uh, undergraduate and as well as graduate school as well. And as I mentioned when I said any, but at any age, so it's not just for high school seniors, it could be for people who are currently uh, in college, whether that's a graduate student or currently a student in, uh, in undergraduate school or somebody going back to school that graduated from um, Granada four years ago and is going back to school is eligible. So in total, so far the foundation has awarded since 2008 almost two million dollars in awards to over 500 students. And so those are all Livermore students. So this is definitely a Livermore organization supporting Livermore students. Uh, so last year, this is a group of the students who came to celebrate, who were awarded scholarships last year. So that was 121 students. They were awarded a total of $351,000 because as I mentioned, if they were a high school senior, they could have received a four, they would have received a $4,000 award if they were planning to go to an undergraduate school. Uh, and three quarter, this, um, slide shows that three quarters of the students are going to school within California uh, between and excuse me so about 15 percent of them to private schools in California the rest either to community colleges in California undergraduate schools or CSUs or UCs to Las Positas alone last year we sent uh, $45,500 so that was a combination of the scholarships awarded um, for last year and the previous years, as well as our support for the Veterans First program last year. So what we're talking about, though, is this is a wonderful opportunity that Mario Pedrosi left uh, the organization and left the community, this gift to the community, but how can we expand on that base? And what more can we do to leverage this wonderful gift that Mario left this community? So the one thing we're doing new this year is we're having a new scholarship category called our Opportunity Scholarship category. 
In the past, all of the scholarships awarded have been merit-based scholarships. The Opportunity Scholarships will be awarded to students with a financial need who are also the first in their families to go to college. Uh, we're also asked each of the four principals to nominate at least two students for a principal's nomination. And the goal there is to attract students who wouldn't have otherwise been eligible probably for a scholarship, but really have overcome something in their life while they've been in high school. Some type of, of challenge that they really turned their lives around while they've been in high school and to be able to recognize that effort for them. And then also for veteran scholarships, as I mentioned before, of that $45,500 that we sent to Las Positas last year, 10,000 of that was for the Veterans First program. What we wanted to do this year was open that up and have specific funds available to veterans no matter where they're going uh, to college. But we needed to, we wanted to do something more than simply award scholarships. And one of the things that we want to do is be able to touch as many students as possible within the school district and within our community. And so we partnered with the school district for the PSAT initiative. And what that is about is really an opportunity to support all students and really help create a culture of a career and college-bound culture across the district in all of our high schools. And so the PSAT initiative helps students ideally decide while they're in high school which path they're going to take whether they're going directly to a career or whether they're going to go to college before they go to a career, but get the students hopefully be one of the components that helps students start thinking about that sooner. So the PSAT initiative has three components. And the first part of that is that all sophomores took the test last fall, last October. So in the previous year in 2012, between the two high schools, we would have had about 200 sophomore students take the PSAT test. And the PSAT, who's familiar with that or remembers, you know, the SAT's been in the news lately because they're remaking the S, um, SAT in the next couple years. The PSAT is the preliminary SAT. One of the things it does is mo uh, give an indication of how well a student will do on the SAT, as well as some other things that I'll talk about. So in the past, really only those high achieving college bound students took it as a sophomore. So we went from 200 students to across the district to 1,000 students, and were able to achieve that because the test was offered on a Wednesday as part of their school day instead of on a Saturday, and it was offered at no charge to the students. So it really provides a lot of access to those students and families who may not even be aware of it to get them initiated get them thinking about it sooner. And so what does it, it's more than just a test. One of the things that the PSAT test does is it helps the schools and the administrators at the schools identify students for honors and advanced placement classes. I'm sure you're all aware you can think of who are the smart kids, right? And, and maybe you were one of those smart kids so your teacher always encouraged you to take the advanced classes. But teachers and students have a tendency sometimes to pigeonhole, either teachers pigeonhole students or students pigeonhole themselves, and to say, no, I, I can't do that, I'm not, uh, I won't be able to perform well in that class. The results that came back were that there were students identified who had not been taking those classes who should be. And so the counselors at the high schools are working with those students to encourage them to take the classes to take the more challenging classes and give them the data that supports why they should be in those classes. And it gives students time to adjust. Uh, a student is <coughs> taking it as a junior, that's one last year left of high school. As a sophomore, that gets them engaged sooner. It gets them engaged also, uh, maybe they're looking at, oh, I do want to go to college. What can I do in the next two years? What can I do for the rest of my time here as uh, a sophomore? And then it also gives them connected earlier with the College Board. And there are a lot of resources available on College Board. College Board is the organization that administers the PSAT, the SAT, and the AP uh, tests. So 
a lot of online resources really geared towards students about, yes, I can go to college, and not only for the college-bound students, but even the <coughs> students that will be going for technical vocational training to help identify interests and make them think about uh, careers. So I think we're all aware that there's kind of um, the higher education crisis in the state. We've heard about rising tuition costs if anybody's paid for college tuitions recently, as I'm currently doing. Um, it takes a small fortune to pay for kids to go to college in many cases right now. There's reduced aid because of the economic crisis, both at the state and the federal level. And so students are taking on increased debt, and we hear about that in the news too. We, that's been a discussion nationally about national debt, but it is also for students as well. But there will be increased demand for a more educated workforce. So by 2025, 50% of the jobs in California will require some sort of advanced education out of high school. And so we really are going to need to double the number of students that are prepared uh, to be able to get degrees that are prepared to accept those jobs. So where are our um, other expansion opportunities given that? One would be that we're able to increase the number of recipients. So it is wonderful that we have been able to award scholarships to over 500 students. Um, and last year that was over 50% of the applicants were awarded but that means less than 50% of the applicants, many of them who were highly qualified, did not receive a scholarship. Um, increased by uh, category. Where can we do outreach and expansion so that we're able to award more technical vocational uh, scholarships? How do we reach those students so that they know that they should be applying for these? It's one thing for a student who is in the middle of applying for college applications to submit, to complete a scholarship application at the same time, but the student who is not going to go to um, UC Berkeley next year or is not going to be going to San Jose State next year and hasn't quite figured out their plans, how do we encourage them to look into what financial support is available to them as well? Um, expand our eligibility. Are there, is there a demand in the community to have support for students outside of those within the school district? Um, some that may be at, attending some of the private schools or the other schools within the city. And increase our scholarship amount. When I referred to what the uh, need and the increased debt and the rising tuition costs, we know that $1,000 a year is very helpful, but students can always be supported by a higher amount. And that would come from being able to really leverage this gift that we have and expand the size of that so that we can increase the scholarship awards for that. Uh, and then look at doing financial aid advising. We talk about um, financial literacy, so there's also financial aid advising. If any of you have gone through that process with your families, it can be quite cumbersome, especially if it's a student that this is the first time, first person in their family to go to college. All of that alphabet soup of financial aid advising and the FAFSA and what is that? I can barely get my tax return done. Now I have to do something else um, to really help families with that. So we really have an opportunity to make an impact and because of the generous gift that Mario left our community, we're able to say that any additional funds can go 100, will go 100% to students. So there's opportunities for people to do named scholarships, to support programs, um, and to do endowed scholarships just as Mario did. So I ran through that pretty quickly. Are there any uh, questions that anybody has? Yes. What's your total endowment? So our endowment right now is about $9 million. How much, please? $9 million. $9 million. Thank you. What other questions are there? Mm -hmm. uh, what fraction of, of the money in the coming year will you devote to the new categories that you're uh, putting in? We'll be looking at that actually this week. Uh, so and the scholarship committee is meeting tomorrow, actually, and we'll make that determination. What was the original gift by Mario Pedrosi? So the original gift was about um, $8 million. 
Uh, and then you have to remember that that was in the uh, early 2000s, so there was property that was sold, and then what happened to the economy and the market, and so now it's back up with awarding almost $2 million, is back up to $9 million. How did he set up his endowment? So how did he set up? He worked with an attorney to set that up in his will? Yeah, through his will. Through his will. Do you do outreach uh, presentations to the junior high schools? The kids are getting ready to take off for high school. We haven't yet, but that would be one of those things to look at. Where do we need to reach those students? What are the programs and how would we expand programs? Uh, yeah, one of the years, last two years, I was one of the judges for the scholarship, uh, for the essays. Have you figured out a better way? Because some of the essays were spectacular. Uh, sometimes you might think that they were held by their parents. Have you figured out a way to <laughs> determine or decipher who really wrote those essays? I mean, to really be very more objective. So we don't have a way to figure that out, Christian. I think that that goes for any application. So is how much of our, our parent driven and what is student driven, just like projects, the mission projects in yes. school, which are our student based and which are our parent based. But I think we also have some outstanding students uh, within our school district as well. So that it, it's hard to judge that. How did Paul. Mario accumulate so much wealth? Where was, his, where was Mario's grocery store? How did he get to be so wealthy? Well, that's probably a question that maybe some other people in the room could answer for me. Or, or, can you, do you know the answer to that, Jennifer? Property. Yeah. Uh, property. A lot of it was, it was he property. Owned, he owned a lot of real estate in Livermore, including the Valley Hotel, which was on First Street. Yeah. Yeah, so it was an increase, a lot of the increase in his property values, and then all of that was sell, sold. And he left not just the majority, but almost all of his... Uh, estate to establish the endowment. Let's hear it for Mario. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, Thank you, Lori Souza. Lori here? No? I want to, well, she wanted to make an announcement. What I really wanted to do is I wanted to have time to talk to a couple of people. Cherry Sheets, I hear you've been somewhere interesting recently. 